Okay, we have all the wires disconnected from the uh, reverse current contactor. It's uh, probably a good time now to talk about the uh, terminals and the labels and what they mean and what they do. Uh, this large terminal mark generator is obvious. It comes from the positive terminal from the generator directly. It's a large battery cable. Same down here except this positive cable comes from the battery. The purpose of the relay again is to connect the battery and the generator together but more importantly to disconnect it when it needs to. Over here the SW terminal is a switch. You have to have 24 volt power or better going to that in order for this thing to connect the two together. If you apply power it allows it to enable this to work. If you disconnect the power it prevents it from working. Over here is the APP uh, terminal. It allows you to apply voltage to the uh, relay coil that makes this all happen. It's really for testing purposes just to verify the coil is working when troubleshooting. Uh, in our B25 there's no wires even connected to this terminal. And lastly we have the terminal marked IND. It's an indicator so when this relay makes connection between generator and battery, it turns on power at this IND. That power comes up here to the generator failure relay. And the only purpose of the generator failure relay is to manage this little red light for generator failure. That's up in the cockpit of the plane. And it's important because you wouldn't have any clue if you're up in the cockpit whether this thing is working in the back of the plane. It's really the only visual you have. Having said that, uh, up in the plane there's a rotary switch that allows you to monitor the voltage between the bus voltage and the generator voltage. Uh, in flight, if the generator failure light is out, those two should read the same. Uh, if they were different, uh, for some reason, uh, it could be that the reverse current contactor had opened up and was not allowing the generator power to uh, go to the generator. I guess it's possible a bulb could have failed. So uh, maybe on a long flight, maybe uh, scan those two every once in a while just to make sure that uh, they're both reading the same voltage. So for testing this, for bench testing this, reverse current relay. We're using a uh, 0 to 30 volt variable power supply. Um, you don't have to use it. You could use the batteries in the plane because all you're doing is applying 24 volts to the generator terminal uh, and then after the relay is enacted we're making sure that we're reading that voltage down at the battery terminal. So here we go with our test. Uh, doing all of this with a simple little jumper wire with alligator clips on each end and we're using our power supply over here. So we'll hook the power supply up to the generator terminal. We're going to run our voltage up to 27 volts or thereabouts. twenty seven point seven is the goal but it doesn't have to be exact alright so there's twenty seven point five volts and uh, we have that going to the reverse current contactor and notice there's no voltage indicated at the uh, battery terminal that's because the relay is still open in order for us to close that relay we have to do two things. The second one is really important for troubleshooting. We have to apply voltage over to the switch terminal and I'll be quiet so you can hear the click. Very slight clicking sound. But it's not the big chunk that you're going to hear when this thing actually makes the connection between the two. That will not happen unless you apply a load down on the battery side. 
you have to have some amperage draw in order for the reverse current relay to activate. In practice, when you're starting up the plane, you're draining the batteries down a little bit with the starter. You've got uh, electric fuel pumps and so forth on, so you will have some uh, current draw at the battery terminal, and that's all that's needed. So you'll hear the chunk now as I apply this test light here. So notice now this is turned on. We have power here and we have power here, which will turn on the generator failure relay, which turns off the generator failure light. So last but not least for a bench test, this is checking out perfectly so far. We can remove the wire from the switch wire and go up directly to the app. This should only be done for a few seconds. There's no need to leave it on there for an extended period of time. But that's how the whole thing works. And just remember, you have to have some current draw down here in order for the, for the thing to activate.